So I'm going to do some tests now. It's running on 20 milliamps, 7.5 volts from this 9 volt battery right here. That's what it's running on. This 9 volt battery is just powering the Hall Effects MOSFET drivers and stuff. So this is the input 20 milliamps, 7.5 volts. Now, this wire right here I'm holding goes back to the steering diode coming out. So this has got the spikes coming out of it right here. Okay. This one. And now I have this cap bank over here. And this wire, as soon as I touch that, it fills up the cap bank. No switching, no nothing. Just directly filling up the cap bank. This is 1400 UF. Now, here's the voltage. And there's the amps going in. Now watch when I just touch it. Okay? I'll try to show you everything at once. The, the, what's going to happen is the amps flash up to 120 milliamps while the volts will go up to about 10 volts. That's what I just did, so let's see if I can do it again. Okay. Ready, set. What happened? I wasn't watching the amps. I'll do it again. First I'll short out the cap bank. Cap bank's down to zero. Okay, this is voltage in the cap bank. This is the amp input. I'm going to do it again. Ready, set, go. Whoops. I just nicked it. Okay, I'll do it again. Go. Oh, that wasn't so bad. It only went up to 30 is all I saw. Hmm. One more time. I think I saw uh, a flash to one over there, 120. Anyways, what I'm getting at is as you fill up a big cap bank, a big one. If you have a small cap, it doesn't do this. But a pretty large 1400 UF. How can you fill that up with a flyback without making the draw go way up? We know how with the discharge we decouple the capacitor when it discharges, but every time after it discharges it fills up again, so you're going to have increased draw. So that's why I explained in last video I have a switch down here that switches in the back EMF flyback into the cap bank. A little bit delayed of the motor coil pulse. So I have I showed you this from before. This one hall effect and another hall effect very close together. This one sends in the power to the cap bank. This one is the motor coil. Okay. And then on top of them, I put another hall effect, and that's going to switch what's in the cap into the load four times the revolution, as I've showed before in other videos, during the blank spot, because I, you know, I popped out every fourth magnet here. So eventually, so... I'm filling up the cap bank now with this delayed second switch method and then I unload the cap bank to the load of 17 and a half ohms with this switch. Okay, so I'm going to try to do that right now. Give me a break here, I'll come right back. Okay, I'm back. Now, I have this switch hooked up to be filling the caps by the switch method. Okay, 
this one over here to pull some of the loads not hooked up now. So first we'll do this. We're just going to fill it up now. When I touch this, when I touch this, oh. Okay, I'm going to clip this on here. I, I just did this, it went up to 0.4 very briefly, and it's, it's filling it from zero volts. One, two, three. Okay, it went all the way to 11. I'm going to do it again, short it up. Zero in the cap bank. Okay, ready? One, watch the amps flinch up a little bit. Uh, and I didn't get a good connection then. I'll do it one more time. Ready, set, go. Okay, so it's going up a little bit. Being switched in. The way it's being switched in is the positive of the cap bank comes out of the switch, which is bi directional MOSFETs. And the uh, other end of the switch is right here. So basically the switch is connecting this steering diode lead to the top bank. Okay. Alright, I'm going to stop again. I'm going to try to get this other one working now over here. Okay, hold on. Okay. Coming back, got the switch working. A couple things wrong with it, and a bad lead from the Hall effect. And the battery had gone way down, so put a fresh battery and fix the lead. So now, this ammeter is reading right next to the load coming out of the switch. So this should have high amps coming out of it. And, uh, so here we go. First I'll connect this battery. I have these connected, so as soon as I connect the battery, the cap bank will fill up. Okay, there's the cap bank voltage. Ouch! Damn! That was a shock I got. Anyone's wondering. Okay. Connect this. 20 milliamps. It's filling up rapidly. Now I'm going to... There. You hear that? The coil's kind of popping as it's being pulsed in. I'm not very getting very big amps over here. I'm going to let it fill up. Get it up to about 25 volts. Now I'll hook up the pulsing circuit. Ugh. Not very good. So 
only going up to 30 milliamps. 20, 20, 30. That's how many volts are in the cap tank. You know, I think I have this on the low amperage place. Anyways, there's a hundred milliamps. There's ninety milliamps. Hold on, I'm gonna change the ammeter where it's at. Okay, I'm back. It's only drawing ten milliamps now. About seven and a half volts. And I'm looking around here, see if everything's ready. I changed where the ammeter is. The ammeter is now between the cap bank and the switching. Okay, and then from the switching, it's just straight into the load. I thought this was the one that gives the low amps. Okay, let's see what happens. First, I'll, let the, I'll disconnect the battery so there's no pulsing to the load. Okay, now I will connect, connect everything and start uh, filling up the cap bank and watch it's 10 milliamps now see it should go up a little and up to four I saw now it's already at 17 I want to stop about 25 uh -oh. here we go okay we're at eight volts from the cap bank. Now here's, uh, this is the low one, so I'm only getting 10 milliamps reading being fed into the switching. So this is the ammeter of the output between the cap bank and the switching. Okay, I'm going to stop and put it back how it was. So we're covering about half of what's being put in, if this is true. You know, 10 milliamps, and it's putting in 20 milliamps. But that's okay, we're getting half, half efficiency. So I'm going to switch it again. Hold on one minute. Okay. Here's what we're getting out. Amperage. Seven volts. And this is going between the load of the coil and the switching. The cap goes right to right to the switching. So I put this is where I had it before when I was getting one amp happening. So, I guess that's about it. I'll do some more tests. Okay, thanks for watching.